Hey guys, JLMUC here. So I was going through the Facebook group 10,000 hours like I normally do in the morning, just check out everybody's artwork. And a member uh, posted a very particular and intriguing question for me. Um, Tom basically wanted to know how to model one of these, which is a Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a great studio microphone. So that got my uh, head, uh, or actually my brain, uh, just going a little bit. And I decided to actually do the model myself. I always had a knack for hard surfers, but more specifically, doing these complex repeatable patterns. So I went through the process, the microphone came out very well, and I decided to do a video tutorial along with the project. So I hope that you guys enjoy the video. I started my pattern with a basic cylinder, and then I applied a bend deformer with a very slight bend. From that point, I jumped over to my top view, duplicated my uh, bent cylinder, flipped it around. Now, in order to be precise, what I did is I moved my pivot and snapped it to one of the verts within that border edge. Then I snapped my whole object to the other vert from the other piece. That ensured that both meshes were snapped together. Now I took both meshes, combined them, made an edge selection, converted that to verts, and then merged those verts. I pretty much have one zigzag and for one piece of, or one tile of this repeatable pattern, I will need four of these. So what I'm going to start doing here is with the help of my front view is align them and then duplicate and then rotate around. This is basically an up under pattern which uh, one uh, side of the up needs to come through with the other side of the under. Took me a little bit to figure out but once I did uh, making the pattern wasn't too hard. So then I'm here, I'm creating the uh, up and down or the perpendicular uh, pieces. So I took one, then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and then uh, rotate it around. So the up and the under are actually meeting on the other side. I then took everything, my four uh, pieces that actually create my repeatable pattern, deleted history, and then uh, combined these. So from this point, it's actually time to make the actual mesh. So what I'm doing here is I'm duplicating my first piece of the pattern, and I'm doing the same vert snap technique where I basically take my pivot, move it, snap it to a vert within that border edge, and then I move the whole piece and snap it to the other vert within that border edge. So this actually gives me an important value here, which is my translate Y. And this is gonna be my magical number. I'm, ba I'm basically gonna take that translate Y and use it with my duplicate special. I basically input how many uh, copies I need, and the first row is actually built. And I'm using the same technique, move the pivot, snap it to a border edge, and then uh, snap the whole object to the other vert within that border edge. Go back to duplicate special, zero out the Y since we're going left to right, this will actually be in the X axis. Uh, I put in my number of copies to 30. And then we have our completed pattern. I took my flat pattern and used a bend deformer to bend it into place. Once I had my cylindrical 
mesh pattern, I deleted the history and then placed it in the right position within the microphone base. For the second part of the mesh pattern, I had to do a little bit of research. Initially, I wanted to do a shrink wrap deformer, but that didn't really pan out so well. And the reason being is that this pattern does not only have uh, information on the X and the Y, but it actually has thickness. So uh, the shrink wrap deformer works well on patterns that are pretty much just flat, but anything with thickness, it will actually project onto that mesh and pretty much just kill any thickness that you have in your pattern. So I had to go back to the drawing board uh, and look at all the deformers that Maya has to offer. Uh, I stumbled upon the wave deformer and while it has a couple of settings, I basically just played around with the settings until I got the shape as close as possible. Now, in addition to that, once I got the uh, shape very close to the tip of that pattern, I went ahead and did a lattice on top of that after I had froze the history. Uh, the lattice allowed me to make small tweaks to the shape to just really perfect it and match my reference that much closer. To finish off my microphone, I basically deleted the inner ring, extruded the edges down, and then bevel those edges to give it a nice round edge. This is the part where basically the microphone mesh will come through the actual piece that holds it. For the uh, inner part of the, I decided to keep it uh, rather simple since the goal of this video was to pretty much focus on the creation of this mesh pattern. I put a cylinder in there, beveled the top edge, and called it done. So this wraps up our tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and that you would be able to apply some of these strategies and workflows when developing your own repeatable patterns and meshes within a 3D package. You can catch me on my website, my ArtStation account, and on my YouTube channel. If you have any ideas for upcoming videos or any other topics that you would like me to cover, just let me know. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.